check I think I think you need to, man. Let's see it. Oh man. What do we you got cooking up? We got a little chicken thighs from farming on front here with some jalapenos, some garlic, you know. Ooh, you know, it's a little spicy, spicy and clark right now. Ooh. That got a little zucchini squash mix, you know what I'm saying? Not the zucchini squash. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Port City, this is episode one of the Dub City Harpy new series, A Real Dialogue. You know what I'm saying? What's up, Port City? This is uh, Zach Postman checking in. On this episode of A Real Dialogue, we sat down with Alicia and Shiradu. Um, she's a local filmmaker here in the Port City who is making a film called What the River Knows. It's a screenplay that she wrote um, back in 1999 after uh, moving to the Port City right around the centennial of the 1898 massacre. And the, the film is based on the 1898 massacre. Um, if you don't know about that, uh, we record a couple podcasts on dubcityheartbeat.com. But basically, um, it was possibly the worst day in Port City's history. Um, white supremacists like Hugh McRae and the founder of Star News, among others, uh, part of a secret nine drafted this white people's declaration of independence where they said they were no longer going to uh, be ruled by African Americans in our city and they violently overthrew the local government it was the only ever successful coup d'etat here on American soil um, anyway I am just so stoked Alicia is working on this film uh, keep an eye out for some upcoming events that uh, she will be hosting to sort of drum up funding for the film. But without further ado, here's the interview. Having yeah, me. Hello, Wilmington. So what? tell me about What the River Knows. What's it about? What's it about? Yeah. What's well, inspired by mm -hmm. the worst day. Yeah. In Wilmington history, 10 mm -hmm. November 1898. Mm-hmm. And it's a ghost story slash murder mystery. Mm-hmm. So it's a narrative drama. Okay. And I actually wrote it 18 years ago. Oh, wow. As uh, my master's thesis. Mm -hmm. So it's a feature, a length, uh, a 120-page feature uh, mm -hmm. length script. However, I got a grant from Kukaloris this year okay. to do a piece by an African-American. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Female. Yeah. Uh, that has a subject that's uh, close to the community, mm -hmm. that is of interest to the community. And so what I did was I created a short teaser yeah. film from the feature. Mm -hmm. So I'm making a short uh, teaser film that has a bit of a cliffhanger ending. Yeah. But we're making it in order to attract investors for the feature. Awesome. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, both named What the River Knows. Mm hmm and so I'm excited that after 18 years of rewriting yeah. this every year, just about, so I've rewritten it several times. Yeah. Uh, trying to sell it to Hollywood or trying mm -hmm. to get an agent to yeah. shop it around Hollywood. And so I decided when I got that grant, the film, the North Carolina grant from Kukaloris, that I would go ahead and excerpt a, a short from it. Mm -hmm. And so it is in uh, two periods. Yeah. 1998, which is mm -hmm. a period piece. That was 20, okay. 20 years ago mm -hmm. almost. And 1898. Okay. So it's a period piece. Yeah. Can we just take it back for a second here? And, you know, for our viewers who don't know what happened in 1898. Right. And so my film is going to unfold that in 15 minutes, what happened. Yeah. But uh, it, it, I, I call it the worst day in yeah. Washington history because at the time, blacks... The black population was over 51%. Mm -hmm. Wow, right? Yeah. In the city of Wilmington in 1898. And blacks were 
very prosperous. Mm -hmm. There were lots of black professionals mm -hmm. living and working in the city. There were lots of uh, black blue collar workers yeah. uh, living yeah. and working in the city. The city uh, ha was actually the largest city in North Carolina at the time. Mm -hmm. And so there was a state port, uh, there mm -hmm. was a mill, there were lots of I industry yeah. going on, and um, everybody was doing well, pr pr pretty yeah. much. Mm -hmm. um, however, back in 1896, the Democrats, who were mm -hmm. self-proclaimed white supremacists, yeah. the Democrats, yeah. um, lost um, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the elections and locally and also statewide and in 1898 1890, they decided they were going to get uh, 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 take the state back yeah over from the Republicans mm -hmm. and so Republicans actually uh, were the leaders in uh, Wilmington mm -hmm. the mayor was a Republican he ha actually had hired and, and brought in several black Republicans mm -hmm. black men at the time could vote and they yeah. voted Republican because that was Lincoln's party. Yeah. So they mm -hmm. actually uh, were, were uh, filled many political seats mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in the political uh, offices in Wilmington. Mm -hmm. There were also black doctors, black nurses, yeah. uh, black uh, professors and teachers, mm -hmm. and lawyers. Yeah, yeah. And uh, most of the restaurants on Front Street in 1898 were actually run and owned by blacks. That's so sort of crazy black and white now because yeah. now you know there's like no black businesses. On there's Front one Street. black yeah. restaurant now that mm -hmm. opened about a month oh, ago. Oh really? Uh, uh, 141 North. Oh, that's it's awesome. Used to be the sushi place yeah. right next to Cape Fear Wine and mm -hmm. Beer. It's now owned by Daryl Brown and a black entrepreneur yeah, from that's, Wilmington. That's I know, so isn't that awesome. wonderful? Yeah. And so, um, also in 1898, Wilmington, most mm -hmm. of the barber shops were run and owned by blacks. Yeah. And they served both black and white clients. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is that the Democrats decided they were going to uh, conspire uh, together and win the elections in November mm -hmm. 1898. But in the meantime, they were sort of setting the stage. Yeah. They were intimidating black men from voting. Yeah. Um, they were, uh, uh, they ran a smear campaign yeah, saying propaganda. blacks were, were, yeah. were criminals and mm -hmm. they were raping their women. Mm -hmm. And then in August of 1898, Alex Manley, who was a black man, yeah. who ran the Wilmington Record, mm -hmm. which was actually, I think, the only daily black newspaper in the, in, in the, in the country. country. Yeah. And so it was here in Wilmington, mm -hmm. he had a press, and he also was a black activist. Mm -hmm. He was a champion of, of, of black causes. Yeah. Well, he wrote an editorial in August that mm -hmm. totally infuriated yeah. uh, uh, whites. Well, mm -hmm. the self-proclaimed white supremacists, uh, saying that blacks and whites were having consensual relations and yeah. relationships. And so uh, he, he was actually uh, writing the editorial uh, as a rebuttal to a, a Georgian uh, white woman who said, oh, black men are, are raping our, mm -hmm. our, our, our white women and, and we need to lynch them a thousand yeah. a week if necessary. And that in, inflamed mm -hmm. Alex Manley. So after he wrote his editorial and published it, wow, that was fuel for yeah. the fire that white supremacists were already sparking mm -hmm. um, to win the elections. Yeah. And so by the time November came around, mm -hmm. the Democrats actually won. Yeah. The elections on November 8th. Yeah. However, they brought in so many uh, red shirts and thousands mm -hmm. of a, a mob of people. Yeah. And on that morning, they went and they burned down Alex Manley's uh, press on mm -hmm. November 10th. Two days later, they burned down his press. He had already escaped the city because mm -hmm. they were looking to lynch him. Yeah. And, uh, and so thousands of uh, uh, a mob of thousands uh, actually just rushed into the black communities shooting and burning yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. uh, lots of people uh, uh, died. We don't know how many. Yeah. There's a rumor that many bodies, black bodies, men who actually were working down uh, on the docks were killed and thrown into the river, but we're not sure how many people died. However, that evening, the, the Democrats actually, uh, they actually did a coup d'etat. So it's mm -hmm. the only coup d'etat that happened in the United States yeah. in which they took over Mm -hmm. The local government. Just, that's, they, that's they, they kicked the mayor out and yeah. his team and put in uh, one of their own. So mm -hmm. that was a coup d'etat. They took over the government and said, yeah. you have to go under a life-threatening duress. Mm -hmm. They made them leave. And they also had a list of at least 25 prominent blacks and whites. And they actually marched them to the trains. Mm -hmm. Them and their families. Yeah. 
they had to leave their homes, so they had mm-hmm. lots of property. Yeah. They had homes, they had businesses, mm-hmm. jobs. They banished them. Oh, they banished gosh. them. And that also that day, many women and children had run away to the woods. Mm-hmm. They were afraid, and they stayed in the woods for, for three days. So actually, in my drama, there's a woman who actually runs away to the woods, and she has a baby. That, that night because she was nine months pregnant. Yeah. She's the wife of my main character mm-hmm. who was a business owner. He uh-huh. was the only city side painter in town. Okay. And so. I actually got him from a, uh, uh, I was doing research. Yeah. It was actually a, a black man who had the only city side painting, bill posting town, uh-huh. uh, uh, bill posting business in town. Mm-hmm. So I fashioned my uh, main character. character. That's really, yeah. that's, uh, you know, something that I think is pretty awesome because you hear a lot when you, you hear about 1898, obviously about Manly and, um, yes. you know, some of those other prominent um, people, but you don't hear about, uh, you know, people who were killed and run out of town. Right. There's so many people, so many families that are just kind of lost. They were. And yeah. so that's really the, mm-hmm. the, the theme. That's why yeah. I wrote uh, What the River Knows back in... Uh, uh, 1999 when I came here yeah. to graduate school, UACW graduate school, mm-hmm. because I did, I did want to um, somehow, well the ending is uplifting, because yeah. what happens is that um, all of, uh, or, or not all, but there's a memorial for everyone who lost something or someone yeah. and never, you know, regained that. Mm-hmm. Um, so but that's why it's a ghost story. Yeah. So what happens is this uh, ghost, uh, uh, this person who lived in 1898, mm-hmm. He actually disappears on the night of mm-hmm. 1898, and nobody knows for a hundred years what happened to him. So a hundred years later, in 1998, his great great grandson comes back to town, yeah. and the the ghost of Balaam actually mm-hmm. um, takes his great great grandson back yeah. in 1898 to discover what happened to him. So it's a it's a yeah. murder mystery slash ghost story that kind of uh, it's really it's really interesting about to, this fictional yeah. couple. Mm-hmm. Uh, we unfold the last six months of their lives from May to November, uh, 1898. Mm-hmm. It's it's cool to kind of bring it into. I guess 1998 isn't necessarily a super modern age now, yeah, but bring it, was it to years the ago. present. Yeah. So when you and it was a hundred years. Mm-hmm. That was the one hundred year. Did you? Yeah. Did you write it at the? I want to ask a little bit about your background. Did okay. you? Are you from Wilmington? I'm not. I, okay. I, I came here. I was in grad school mm-hmm. at ECU okay. in Greenville, mm-hmm. and I was working on a multicultural literature mm-hmm. uh, uh, master's and uh, a creative writing yeah. master's. And when I got done with my two years, I didn't know what I really wanted yeah. to do for my thesis. Mm-hmm. And so I decided, oh wait a minute, I think I'll go to Wilmington and write my movie. Yeah. You know. So I came here in 97 and got into uh, the creative writing graduate Mm -hmm. program. They had just opened it up in 96. Yeah. And I got in and um, I went to see a movie. Uh, I had gotten in there and it was about January or February 1998, 97. And I went to see a movie called Rosewood Mm -hmm. by John Singleton. Mm -hmm. John Singleton, uh, who did Boys in the Hood and some other pieces, he did this movie called Rosewood. It Mm -hmm. was about an actual riot very similar to what happened in, in, in Wilmington in 1898 that happened in Rosewood, Florida. Yeah. In which this very well-to-do, up-and-coming uh, community mm-hmm. of blacks and whites was burned down within a week. Yeah. And uh, uh, he did this awesome narrative yeah. drama, fictionalized mm-hmm. account of, of, of what happened in Rosewood, Florida. So I wanted to know yeah. what happened. After I saw that movie, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Um, I want, wanted to know what happened in Wilmington. Yeah, so you, before you had come uh, to Wilmington, you didn't know that your movie I, was going to be about Right, right. I didn't know about it. You didn't know about it. And, I didn't know yeah. anything. And then when I got here in 1997, 1998, they did a centennial. A, a yeah, year, it seems actually, like when they first started. a year-long started. Mm-hmm. citywide centennial yeah. for 1898. I started learning about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I did the research. Yeah. And I started writing the script mm-hmm. uh, because there was a... A visiting professor, Stanley Colbert, who's since passed, but he was the the producer of Flipper. I don't know if you remember Flipper from years ago, in the sixties and mm-hmm. seventies. There was a, yeah. a TV series called Flipper about a dolphin, uh-huh. and so he came to Wilmington as a visiting professor and he taught screenwriting. Mm-hmm. And so by the end of my two years, I was able to have uh, this screenplay uh, uh, completed. However, 
UNCW was not able to handle, they didn't have the faculty to handle yeah. a, a defense, a, a screenplay as a defense. So I took it back to ECU. A screenplay as a defense? Yeah, they didn't have the faculty to, to be able to allow a student to defend a screenplay. Yeah, okay, Even though yeah. They, they were teaching uh -huh. writing. Okay, so that makes sense. I was really mm -hmm. concentrating on creative non-writing at the time. Yeah. I was going to do a creative non-fiction, non creative uh -huh. non-fiction piece. But I really wanted to do the screenplay. So mm -hmm. I took it back to ECU and got my master's in creative writing mm -hmm. by defending my script, okay. What the River Knows, uh, in 99. Cool. Mm -hmm. And I've been rewriting it ever since. Yeah. So now, finally, it's time to, to, to help tell the story. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of people in Wilmington who Definitely. don't know yeah. what happened uh, here in their town yeah. in 1898. And it's sad because Wilmington really has never been the same. That's a, my next question that I was going to ask you is, um, do you think, you know, um, having written this screenplay and uh, really getting yourself involved in the story of 1898, you know, um, being a, a person of color living in Wilmington, do you think that the black community ever recovered from 1898? No, they haven't. They mm -hmm. have not recovered. And this is actually something that has gone on in many cities. Yeah. in America because after slavery uh, blacks were free and they were upwardly mobile but every time something would knock them down mm -hmm. riots okay yeah. lynchings mm -hmm. uh, uh, massacres killings yeah and also racism mm -hmm. and um, segregation all of that actually in Wilmington Jim Crow which is another word for segregation yeah. had not really come had yeah. not moved into Wilmington Mm -hmm. You know, blacks and whites were eating at the same restaurants yeah. and eating and Doing having their hair cuts in the same barber mm -hmm. shops and, and and so there wasn't the segregation, but that did start happening after uh, that the riot, mm -hmm. uh, mainly because nothing was done about it. Yeah, nobody was uh, actually um, uh, charged with these atrocious um, uh, criminal acts, mm -hmm. and there wasn't really, there hasn't been a state investigation mm -hmm. as to what really happened. Alex Manley, who actually could pass for white, yeah. he was a mulatto. His father was a was former a, North Carolina governor. Yeah, the governor. So he looked white, but yeah. his mother was black. And he lived black. Mm -hmm. And he was a black you know, champion uh, uh, of the black community. But he went to Washington, to Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. after this happened. And yeah. he actually was about to get an audience with President McKinley. Mm -hmm. But then someone told President McKinley that he was a black man. And so President McKinley canceled the uh, a meeting and did not meet with him. So Alex Manning was going to uh, 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 just plead, yeah. plead with him to to investigate what happened mm -hmm. in, on November tenth, eighteen ninety eight, and it was not done. Yeah. So the self proclaimed white supremacists got away with yeah. their atrocities. Mm -hmm. They got away with it, and of course now. It's still going on. When we don't learn our lessons, oh, we are doomed yeah. to repeat the mm -hmm. lesson until we learn it. Yeah. And so with the white supremacy uh, that's coming up now, yeah. here in 2017, mm -hmm. this means that, wow, we still have this problem in America. Oh, for sure. And, and so blacks yeah. are still suffering, yes, uh, mm -hmm. uh, because of that. If you look a lot in, of blacks yeah. are. Sorry. Um, if you look at the history of Wilmington, that wasn't the last time that a black newspaper got burned down by white supremacists. It happened again in yes. 71 with Mr. There, Gervais' that's newspaper. That's right. And, and before that with the Wilmington 10, um, there yeah. was a group of people who were charged uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, wrongly yeah. um, for, for acts because they were just trying to, yeah. um, uh, they, they were looking rights, to get their yeah. rights. And, mm -hmm. and uh, that's at the time when a lot of uh, High schools and schools were trying to integrate, yeah. to desegregate. Mm -hmm. But now here in Wilmington, we all we have segregation of schools again. Yeah, because oh, totally. of, of our yeah. uh, board uh, 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 of uh, education, yeah. who are not looking out for all. Yeah, of its, there's blatant uh, uh, discrimination and, and going children. on in those it schools. It is, but it's not just in Wilmington. Yeah, but I think that. We need to focus. We are in Wilmington. We need to focus on what we can do. Oh, so I yeah, think telling the sure. story, mm -hmm. educating people oh, about definitely. 1898. Yeah. I'm also going to, we're, we're, we're organizing a music and poetry slam mm -hmm. uh, with a theme of 1898. 
for October the 13th, mm -hmm. uh, Friday the 13th. Awesome. We're having, it's actually a benefit fundraiser for yeah. uh, the production. Mm -hmm. It's going to be at Morning Glory Coffee House on October 13th. So I hope this cool. comes out before. Yeah, when and can we folks um, can come out to, find, to, where to can we find uh, the information on that? Um, we, we are making a public events page okay. on Facebook. Cool. And so um, you can actually... Um, uh, contact me yeah. on Facebook, Alicia mm -hmm. and Shiradu. That's cool. my personal page. But I also have a, uh, a, a film production yeah. page, and my film production uh, page is called Playing God Films. Okay. So you can look up Playing God Films. Yeah, we'll on link Facebook. It up. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So we're going to have that wonderful, uh, 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 informative, entertaining yeah. night. Of poetry and music. That sounds uh, great. With a yeah. theme around 1898 mm -hmm. and, and Morning Glory Coffee yeah. House at 7:30, October 13th. Cool. I'm also going to do an 1898 ghost uh, trolley tour. Mm -hmm. Going to okay. do an 1898 ghost tour yeah. on the trolley. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is we're trying to get a, a city trolley, and we're going to take folks down into the different areas where the riot happened. Yeah. And I'm going to lecture. I'm going to lecture about what happened yeah. at Fourth and Harnett. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the Lower Cape Fear Historical Society is going to do an 1898 tour. But it's going to be a walking tour. So they, they can't walk people all the way from downtown where they yeah. are. They start at 3rd Street mm -hmm. uh, and go, they can't go Up all the way to, to the, the north side. Yard. So they're going to yeah. be doing the, they're going to hit the specific uh, historical spots yeah. downtown. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be around the third week in November. But mm -hmm. we're hoping to do an 1898 Ghost Trolley tour. We're yeah. going to have we're going to have some actors that you know uh, sort of dressed in um, some of the historic as historical figures, and we're going to go down to some of those areas on the north side yeah. and take this informational tour down to the north side, so mm -hmm. that people can start knowing where it happened and when it happened and what happened. Yeah. Because the people on the north side need to know. Yeah, what oh, for sure, yeah. In, in their neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're going to do that. Especially with them trying to, you know, there's that effort to rebrand, like, the Brooklyn neighborhood. It's well, just, it's called gentrification. Yeah, They have, mm -hmm. uh, have regentrified re yeah. a lot of um, neighborhoods, and I think it's only because blacks uh, who were living here haven't been able to hold on to their homes. Yeah. They, they haven't been able mm -hmm. to buy their homes. Yeah. They, and, then, and then they can't afford to stay in them, so mm -hmm. they're moved out. Insane rent prices, people, and, yes. you know, economy that can't really keep up um, right. with good jobs. I mean, that's a whole issue in itself, but I think it's really important what you're doing with that um, ghost tour going around to those different sites, because one of my... Uh, kind of big kind of beefs with around the centennial is um they put that you know 1898 park just kind of randomly away from everything and then yes there was no it reparations is. there haven't been I and, and yeah. people lost their livelihoods generational they wealth. lost their jobs yeah they lost property mm -hmm. they lost land they lost homes and jobs yeah businesses Mm -hmm. They did. Yeah. And, and and Thomas Miller was a black man who who was one of the richest men in town mm -hmm. in 1899, black or white. He, yeah. He, he loaned money to both blacks and whites. Mm -hmm. He was a money lender. Yeah. And a pawnbroker. Mm -hmm. He was a realtor. Yeah. And an auctioneer. He was an entrepreneur and businessman, Thomas Miller. So he's one of the characters. Yeah. I have two historic characters in this, uh, two historic features, mm -hmm. uh, uh, figures who were actually living in 1898 at the time in my uh, fictional uh, piece mm -hmm. and Thomas Miller is one of them and he was banished he did not have time yeah to to uh, actually uh, secure any of all I think they did it because he owed so people owed him so much money they were ready to like we're gonna get mm -hmm. rid of him so he never and his family never did get um, back his property and his his businesses and, and his livelihood yeah uh, uh, his his, his uh, uh, money that he'd made mm -hmm. over these years. So I think reparations need to go to his family. Yeah. Actually, Rosewood, Florida, mm -hmm. uh, that that riot, uh, the descendants did get uh, reparations about seven mm -hmm. million dollars from the state of Florida. Yeah. Because there was a reporter who went in and did an investigation, mm -hmm. and so they formed a state uh, investigative team. Yeah. And they awarded seven million dollars to about uh, nine descendants mm -hmm. of the Rosewood, Florida riot. 
that happened in the early 1900s. Yeah, I think that's insane that uh, there haven't been reparations. And I also think that there should be, I think if you're a descendant of someone that, you know, lost uh, property or whatever, you should get reparations. But I also think there should be like some black business incubators. Oh, and, that would be wonderful. Yeah. And uh, uh, maybe properties. Yeah. Homes. Maybe uh, uh, edu a free education. Free education, yeah. Yeah, I think the black business incubators is a very good idea. Yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. But we need to continue to support them through their first five years. Yeah. Because it's tough. Exactly. Starting a business. Yeah. And it's expensive starting a business. Mm -hmm. It is. I worry about the um, future of the black community here in Wilmington all the time because. I said, like, we got 109,000 people in Wilmington now, and it's expected to raise, like, 56,000 people in the next three decades. Wow, wow. And the area of affordable housing is just getting compressed smaller and it smaller sure and smaller. It sure is. This you is know? a small percentage who are doing so well mm -hmm. here. Yeah. But people are leaving Wilmington because they can't get decent jobs. Yeah. They're leaving Wilmington. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yes. yeah. And, and, and there are people who are moving in who are able to move into these professions because they already have the skills. Yeah. They have the education mm -hmm. or they have the funding yeah. to come in and, and, and start their lives here. Mm -hmm. So, yes. But this is happening oh, in a lot of cities over in America. The place. Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's why blacks, yeah. you know, I think the masses are not doing as well. As say their white counterpart, kind of For sure, yeah, I heard um, because of what happened the other day, you yeah. know, in, 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 in times like there were so many riots that happened uh, right after slavery through the early 1920s. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it just destroyed. Uh, blacks had built themselves up, and then they were torn down. Yeah, they were torn down. I think the city of Wilmington. One thing uh, I talked to when. We talk 1898 um, comes up a lot. It's like I always kind of felt like this city has sort of like a malaise to it, like a kind of lacks connection in a lot of there, ways. There is. And a lot of blacks don't like to go downtown. Yeah. They don't like to go over to Hugh McCray Park because, mm -hmm. you know, Hugh McCray was one of the secret nine, the yeah. cons cons conspirators of the 1898 mm -hmm. um, event that happened. And they, they stay to themselves. And yeah. They just decide not to. They don't feel welcomed mm -hmm. um, uh, in, in certain parts of their own city. Yeah. Which is, that's kind of weird. It, it is. It, it is That's like segregation. Weird. Yeah. You know? Oh, it, I think our city is definitely, you could say it's segregated for sure. It is. Yeah. And America still has that problem. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Which to me, I mean, we shouldn't have. You know? No, it's yeah. kind of a shock, but it's not. But mm -hmm. it shouldn't be. You know? It makes for kind of a uh, bleak, almost just really kind of dull culture, I think, when you don't have that sort of mm -hmm. mixing and different. Mm -hmm. But there are, there, there are several uh, organizations and certain, you know, uh, uh, black c communities yeah. and organizations that are. They yeah. are doing things. Yeah, oh, for and, sure. And, and, yeah. and I appreciate that. Yeah, Frankie so, Roberts with yes. Link and... That's There's right. a lot and of the great NAACP support. The very poor. Strong yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, lots of great, great people do. And uh, you know, Dub City heartbeat. You know, we believe the city has you know that that heartbeat, that that pulse. We're just trying to get, get it louder. I'm, you know? I'm I'm really happy to see yeah. your um, publication and, and your website. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much yeah. for for being here. Yeah, and thank for you so me much. And yeah, for for, for uh, uh, helping us to to get. The, the knowledge out, the information, yeah. the history, to tell the, the mm -hmm. real history. I was, I think that this, I'm so, so excited to watch this project uh, kind of Thank evolve you. and come together. Well, we're going to be shooting October the 15th yeah. at Poplar Grove Plantation. They have mm -hmm. opened their arms to us. That's and we awesome. get to use all of the plantation, the Big yeah. Owls, which is a museum, Yeah. because we have scenes, uh, interior uh, scenes mm -hmm. uh, that are set in 1898, yeah. and we get to use mm -hmm. the, the big house for that, and also the, the tenant farmer's house we're using, mm -hmm. um, and we're using Walker World uh, for our exterior oh, cool. 1898 scenes yeah. on the river. 
mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, and we're also going to shoot downtown. So we're going to shoot for the next three weekends, starting October fifteenth. Mm-hmm. But it's a period piece. We have eleven actors, yeah, and we have a crew of almost twenty. Oh wow, that's so a pretty. It's big a pretty big crew and yeah. cast, and it's a period piece, and the costuming is very expensive. Yeah, I'm determined to pay to to actually compensate all mm-hmm. the crew and cast. Yeah, so we actually are running a fundraiser, and we're cool. really asking folks. To, to contact me and to donate or to back our project. Yeah. You can actually pre-order t-shirts. Mm-hmm. Um, we're also offering, uh, uh, for a donation of $20, a t-shirt and an invitation to our private rap party to kind of awesome. you know, interact yeah. and, and party That's a deal. with us, yeah. celebrate with us. Mm-hmm. And we also have a closed uh, Facebook group that mm-hmm. you can join and um, uh, uh, donate uh, 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 maybe um, a few dollars and maybe even volunteer mm-hmm. to work with us as a production assistant yeah if you'd like to do that cool mm-hmm. awesome well uh we will definitely link to all that stuff on thank the website you. i'm thank really so looking much, forward sir. to that event on the 14th the 13th 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 i'll cut that out okay.